this joy surpasses all description which only shri gurunatha that is the supreme teacher is able to know the muni who hears the sounds when he closes his ears with his two hands should fix his mind on it until he attains the steady state this anahata sound which one listens to gradually overpowers and drowns out the external sounds the yogi overcoming the instability of his mind will in 15 days become contented and happy during the initial stages of the practice various prominent inner sounds are heard but when progress is made they become more and more subtle in the beginning the sounds resemble those of the ocean the clouds the kettle drum and jarjara that is a sort of drum cymbal in the middle day they resemble those arising from the mardala the conch the bell and the horn in the end they resemble those of the tinkling bells the flute the veena and the bees thus are heard the various sounds from the middle of the body even when the loud sounds resembling those of the clouds and the kettle drum are heard he should try to fix his attention on the subtler than the subtle sounds alone even though his attention changes from the loud to the subtle sounds or from the subtle to loud he should never allow his attention to wander to other extraneous sounds in whatever in a sound the mind first focuses itself in that it reaches steadiness and becomes one with it in the end as a bee through drinking nectar of flowers cares not for the fragrance so the mind absorbed in the nada does not care for the objects of enjoyment the sharp iron goad of nada can effectively curb the mind which behaves like a mad elephant that wanders in the garden of the sense objects when the mind is bound by the sounds of nada and has given up its fickleness then it attains excellent steadiness and it is like a bird that has lost its wings the yogi desirous of obtaining the sovereignty of yoga should abandon all thoughts and with a carefully concentrated mind should meditate on the nada alone nada is like a snare for catching the deer within that is the mind it is also the hunter who kills the deer that is the mind nada is like the bolt of a stable that prevents horses in the form of the mind from wandering a yogi therefore should daily practice concentration upon the nada mercury calcinated by the action of sulfur becomes solidified and gives up its restlessness and rises in the air similarly the mind concentrating on the nada gives up its fickleness and roams in the supportless akasha the mind like a serpent within hearing the sound of nada forgets everything and becomes one pointed and does not run away the fire that burns a piece of wood dies along with the wood so also the mind engaged in nada gets absorbed along with the nada a skillful archer can easily kill a deer when it stands attracted by the sounds of bells etc so also the deer in the form of mind that is for a skillful yogi that which is to be known lies inside the dwani which is the anahata sound and the mind is within that which is to be known supreme self the mind gets absorbed therein that is a supreme state of vishnu the conception of akasha that is the generation of sound exists as long as the sound is heard the soundless state is praised as parabrahman or paramatman whatever is heard in the form of nada is only shakti the supreme truth is without form that itself is parameshwara all the hatha and laya yoga practices are only for the attainment of raja yoga those perfected in raja yoga cheat death 
மைண்ட் இஸ் அ சீட் ஹத யோகா இஸ் அ சாயில் அந்த எக்ஸ்ட்ரீம் வைராக்யா இஸ் த வாட்டர் பை தீஸ் த்ரீ த கல்ப கிரீப்பர் தட் கிவ்ஸ் வாட்டர் இஸ் டிசையர் த உண்மணி தட் இஸ் த துரிய அவஸ்தா ஸ்ப்ரிங்ஸ் அப் குயிக்லி பை கான்ஸ்டன்ட் ப்ராக்டிஸ் ஆஃப் கான்சன்ட்ரேஷன் ஆன் நாதா ஆல் வாய்ஸஸ் ஆர் டெஸ்ட்ராய்ட் த மைண்ட் அண்ட் த பிராணா வெரிலி கெட் அப்சார்ப்ட் இன் தட் பியோர் ஸ்டேட் தட் இஸ் சைத்தன்யா ஜூரிங் உண்மணி அவஸ்தா த பாடி பிகம்ஸ் லைக் அ லாக் ஆஃப் ஃபுட் த யோகி ஹியர்ஸ் நத்திங் நாட் ஈவன் த லவுட் சவுண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அ கான்ச் ஆர் அ துந்துபி தட் இஸ் த லார்ஜ் ட்ரம் த யோகி ஹூ ஹஸ் பாஸ்ட் பியாண்ட் ஆல் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் அண்ட் இஸ் நாட் ட்ரபிள்ட் பை எனி தாட்ஸ் மெமரிஸ் ரிமைண்ட்ஸ் லைக் ஒன் டெட் அன்டவுட்டர்லி ஹீ இஸ் அ முக்தா எமான்சிபேட்டட் பை லிவிங் தட் இஸ் ஜீவன முக்தா த யோகி இன் சமாதி இஸ் நாட் ஸ்வாலோட் அப் பை த ப்ராசஸ் ஆஃப் டைம் தட் இஸ் டெத் ஹி இஸ் நாட் இன்ஃப்ளூயன்ஸ்ட் பை குட் ஆர் பேட் கர்மா நார் இஸ் ஈ எஃபெக்டட் பை எனி திங் டன் அகைன்ஸ்ட் ஹிம் த யோகி இன் சமாதி எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் நெய் த ஸ்மெல் டேஸ்ட் டச் சவுண்ட் ஷேப் நார் கலர் ஹி இஸ் நாட் அவேர் ஆஃப் ஹிம் செல்ஃப் ஆர் தி அதர்ஸ் ஹீ இஸ் சர்டன்லி எ ஜீவன முக்தா liberated while still living when his consciousness is neither asleep nor awake when his chitta is free from smriti or vismriti that is memory and forgetfulness he is neither dead nor living the yogi in samadhi is not affected by heat or cold pain or pleasure honor or disgrace in a waking state when a yogi stays as if asleep in a steady state devoid of inhalation and exhalation then indeed is he liberated the yogi in samadhi cannot be killed by any weapon all the world cannot overpower him he is beyond the powers of mantras and yantras as long as the prana does not enter the middle path that is sushumna as long as the bindu semen does not become solid from the restraint of breath as long as the mind with its chitta does not become of the same nature as the object contemplated upon that is the brahman during meditation so long are those who merely talk of jnana nothing but vain talkers and untruthful men with this we come to the end of hatha yoga pratipika called samadhi lakshana Krishna says in the Bhagavatam there are only three ways to liberation laid down by me they are jnana karma and bhakti then why is raja yoga said to be the chief means of attaining liberation the answer is that all three are combined in the eight fold yoga the shruti says the self alone is to be seen heard contemplated upon and realized that self can be attained by shravana listening manana reflection nidhi dhyasana realization the first two are included in swadhyaya which is one of the subdivisions of niyama the second stage of yoga swadhyaya is the thorough study of the teachings on liberation with a complete knowledge of their inner meanings and symbolism nidhi dhyasana is the restraining of the ideal that there is nothing else besides brahman and the fostering of the realization that everything is brahman this is contained in dhyana the seventh stage of raja yoga karma yoga which is performing all acts as an offering to ishvara this is contained in the kriya yoga described by patanjali patanjali says kriya yoga is tapas swadhyaya and ishvara pranidana tapas means the purification of the body by the observance of various penances swadhyaya consists of those studies that bring about a predominance of the sattva guna ishvara pranidana is praising ishvara remembering and worshiping him by word thought and action and an unswerving devotion to him bhakti really means the constant perception of the form of the lord by the inner organ there are nine kinds of bhakti 
hearing the lord concerning the lord singing it remembering him worshiping his feet offering flowers to him bowing to him in spirit regarding oneself as a servant becoming his companion and holy offering oneself to him these are all included in ishwara pranidana bhakti has been described by narayana teertha as an unbroken stream of love towards the feet of the lord a love that is the be all and end all of a person's existence and during which he is as it were absorbed in the object of his devotion madhusudana saraswati has also described it as a state of mind when previous to its being utterly annihilated and absorbed it becomes of a nature of the lord thus bhakti in its most transcendental aspect is included in samprajnata samadhi so the three ways laid down by krishna in the bhagavatam have been shown to be included in the stages of yoga this yoga practice in its entirety and in the order laid down as enough for the attainment of liberation in this sense alone we have to understand that the words in the puranas saying that the brahman is to be attained by yoga namaskara thank you